Another extremely important concept with scripting is tables. So tables are arrays. If you have some programming experience, you'll know what those are. Basically, it's a container with compartments which can contain any type of data. So we can put variables in there, we can put other tables inside there, we can put functions inside there, and so forth. So as you can imagine, the sky's the limit. If you can put tables inside tables, then it's basically an endless um, array of information that you can store, access, and work with. So basically, think of a table as a filing cabinet. So you can see here we've got the metaphor of our variable being the envelope, and then we've got the metaphor of our table being the filing cabinet. Okay, let's take a look at some examples of tables. Here in Setup Factory, I'm going to go into the On Startup Action screen here, and I'm going to type in an application exit action. That way we're just testing out our, our script and not our application. All right, let's take a look at the first way to create a table. Now, there's two types of tables, numeric and associative. The first type is numeric, and that's basically like a mailbox in an apartment building. You've got different slots, and each one has a number. So let's go ahead and create a table. You can name it anything you want. We'll name ours My Table, so it's easy to keep track of. And there we go. My Table equals curly braces, semicolon. We've created our first table. That's it. That's all you have to do. It's empty, but it exists. Now let's go ahead and assign some values to the first couple slots of this particular table. So we'll say My Table 1. And that means slot number one equals, and then we'll go ahead and put in a value here of John. And then how about in the second slot, so my table two equals Smith. Now when we use square braces like that to refer to slots within a table, that's referred to as array notation. Array notation. Let's go ahead and put in a dialog message box action here to test out our values and see how this works. We've got our title, we're going to put in a value, and then we're going to go ahead and refer to these table slots. We'll say my table, slot one, I'll put a concatenation operator and a space in between, and then we'll refer to my table, slot number two. Let's go ahead and run this and see how it works out. As you can see here, we got our values and it's displayed them properly. So we've referred to those slots and it retrieved the values for us and used them in our script. Okay, so that's the very basic way that you can create a numeric table. We refer to this type of table as numeric because it's got the numeric slots, right? One, two, three, and so forth. You can put as much stuff as you need in a table like this and you can just keep referring to those slots. Later on, we'll learn how to loop through these tables and basically test to see if certain values are contained in there and so forth. But let's take a look at one more example of this particular uh, form here. And we're just going to go ahead and substitute numbers instead of our names here. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a mathematical interaction with them by putting a multiplication operator in between here. So I've changed the value of the first slot to 3, the second slot to 4, and here I'm calling in my dialog message box to see what the value of slot number 1 times the value of slot number 2 is. Let's go ahead and run that and see how it works. As you can see here, it multiplied them together and it gave me the answer, 12. So that's how you can create interaction between the different assignments within your table. Now let's take a look at the second way to create a numeric table. So this is still the first kind of table, but we'll look at the second way to do this. And that is to actually assign the values right inside the uh, declaration here. So as we're declaring the table with the curly braces, we actually just go ahead and assign things. A comma separates each slot. So for example, if I do this, and I run it, we'll get the same result as we just did. It'll be 3 times 4 because 3 is in slot number 1, then the comma puts 4 in slot number 2. And likewise, we could go ahead and type in John and then Smith and get the same effect. Okay? So basically, we'll go ahead and test this out just to confirm that. And you can see here when I run this, that indeed uh, we've, we've assigned those values to those slots. Okay, now let's go back into our application here, into our scripting editor, and let's take a look at the second type of table, and that's called an associative table. 
So again, you create the first way to create an associative table is to just go ahead and declare it with the curly braces like that. And then we can go ahead and assign some values. Now, of course, by its name, you can tell that the associative table makes value associations. Okay, so let's go ahead and ass assign uh, to the table name my table in the uh, label named first name. Okay, so you can call that um, a named association if you like. John. So instead of just a slot number, slot number one, we've actually created a name for that slot, and the name is first name. Now that isn't necessarily occurring in slot number one of this table. You can basically assign all different names to different values that you like. So basically here if we go my table dot last name equals Smith, we can't refer to these any longer as slot number one and slot number two because these are not basically existing in that way anymore. These exist as an association with their name. So for example, if we want to refer to them, we have to use this. So I'm going to go ahead and set up our example here. And you can see what I'm doing here. Instead of referring to the slot number where that data exists, I'm actually referring to the slot label. So we've created a label that's associated with each of these values. Now you can consider this as creating variables within a table. So we've created basically two variables here within the table called my table. And that would be first name equals John and last name equals Smith, right? Okay, let's go ahead and run our example here and see how that works. Okay, as you can see, it works like we predicted. We got our variable um, values out of our table and we've got them properly displayed. Now let's go back here and we'll take a look at the second way that we can create an associative table. And that's basically, you might have guessed, just to go ahead and make variable associations within the um, table declaration here. So if we say first name equals John and then last name equals Smith, we get the same exact effect as we just had. And if we go ahead and test this out, it'll confirm it. So let's go ahead and build this and take a look. As you can see, it worked perfectly. Now the important concept that I wanted to drive home here is that we're no longer making numeric associations. So if I go ahead and turn this around so that instead of declaring the values in this order, I actually declared them in the, the reverse order you'll see that when we run it, we get the same result. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. You can see we get the same result because it's calling them back based upon their labels and not upon where they're placed inside the table. Okay? So that's an associative table and we're creating associative values. For example, first name equals John, last name equals Smith. And we'll try this again here with a mathematical equation just to drive home the concept. Let's say x equals 5, y equals 10. Then let's go ahead here in the example and we'll refer to them as my table x times my table y. All right, and you see again we're using this what we call dot notation to refer to these. We'll press OK. We'll go ahead and run that and we'll see how it works. There you go. We've got the 5 times 10 and it worked perfectly. Okay, so that's tables and these are the different ways that we can work with them. Now, just so that we have one example which has more than two slots filled within the table, let's go ahead and run one final example here and we'll say my table, we use a simple numeric table, equals 2, comma, 3, comma, 4, comma, 5 and then we'll go ahead and multiply those values together. So we'll go ahead and refer to those as my table. And again, we're using a numeric table, so we have to go back to the slot method here or array notation. And we'll say my table one times my table two times my table three times my table four. 
Okay, let's go ahead and run that example and take a look at what we get. As you can see, it worked perfectly. So you can see that that is indeed proof that you can assign as many values as you want here to the slots within a table and call them back later. So for example, an associative table could contain um, employee information. For example, 50, 60, 80 different um, pieces of information about a single employee. And you could call those back as you need them. So let's just go ahead and finish off this lesson with one final example. And this is where we're going to go ahead and declare an associative table. And we'll say my table word one equals tables. And then I'm just going to cut and paste here to create a couple more values. Word two and word three within the same one. And I'm going to say tables are great. And then we're going to go ahead and display that value. And then we'll move on to the next lesson. So we're referring to these by their name. So we'll say my table dot word one. And we're going to concatenate that again. Just to reinforce how this works. There's our concatenation. And then we've got our word two. We'll concatenate a space in there. Word three. And there we go. Let's go ahead and test that out and then move on to the next lesson. There it is. Tables are great. And you can bet on that. So hopefully everybody's got a, a clear example here of how tables work. And let's move on to something a little more complicated.